Let's learn a little bit more about how these landform features formed. When we look at Southeast Asia, both mainland and insular Southeast Asia are quite rugged. Uh, we definitely see and that's a lot of the outcome of uh, the Himalayan mountains. Kind of creates this north-south pattern in terms of this mountain chain we see going through uh, Burma and Thailand, but also going along the coast uh, of Vietnam. Uh, so we have these north-south mountains that are kind of from that from that collision of the Himalayans way up farther uh, to the north. Uh, also, we have in Indonesia uh, kind of this rugged feature that goes along the edge of Southeast Asia all the way around. And then we kind of have the Philippines uh, kind of also going along the edge, uh, kind of along this uh, particular dark blue area. And that's essentially a deep ocean trench. So what's going on here is on both sides of Southeast Asia, you're seeing convergent plate boundaries. Let's describe the role plate tectonics plays in the landforms that we see here, but also, very importantly, the natural hazards, whether they be tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes, that are so devastating to this area. And as always, we begin with our world plate tectonic map, and unfortunately, we're kind of in the corner here in Southeast Asia. So it's kind of hard to tell, but essentially we have on one side, we have the orange plate colliding with the green plate, but then on the other side, the red plate is then colliding with the green plate. So here we have two convergent plate boundaries, very important, that help to define the region physically. What I've done here is I used a red line to showcase the convergent plate boundary between the Indo-Australian plate, so this that orange plate I was showing you beforehand, colliding with, from coming from the north, the Eurasian landmass, so mainland Southeast Asia and also uh, Borneo and the Malay Peninsula and Sumatra. So essentially you have this collision. If you notice, these arrows are sort of going in opposite directions as they collide with each other along that red line. We also have convergence on the other side of Southeast Asia, showcased with that orange line. And so once again, the Himalayans are essentially coming plowing into the Eurasian landmass, and what's doing is kind of forcing Southeast Asia kind of to go a little bit to the south. And so then on the other side, the Filipino plates then colliding with uh, the Eurasian plate forming right there along the side of the archipelago of the Philippines. And thus, subsequently, where we have convergent plate boundaries, we also have a lot of earthquakes. So this is an area part of what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire, this area of convergence that we see throughout much of the Pacific, kind of on the outer edge of the Pacific. And so in Southeast Asia, on both the convergent plate boundaries I mentioned, on the Indo-Australian plate convergent plate boundary and the Filipino plate convergent boundary, we see a lot of earthquakes. So that's our first key natural hazard we have as an outcome of the massive amount of convergence and the, you know, the uh, convergence that happens all the time. So it's not only big convergence, huge plate movements, but also happens quite frequently. Here we have the plate collision boundary that I just described beforehand. So this is the Indo-Australian plate over here colliding with the Eurasian plate to form the island of Sumatra. The island of Sumatra is quite volcanic. How'd that come to be? Well, once again, we've got two plates converging with each other. Here we have a deep ocean trench as one plate is forced to go underneath the other plate. And so in this case, the Indo-Australian plate is denser, it's heavier, and so it's forced underneath the lighter plate, the less dense Eurasian plate. So if I go ahead and put this sucker in motion, we can see these plates, this plate's moving. All of this debris here, this collision, it's going to move debris down to a lower level, and then moves it down to a lower level. It's then going to get heated up because uh, as we get closer to Earth's center, it gets hotter. And so because of that, it then heats up, and this material then is forced up, creating volcanoes, but also uh, creating these rugged features, but also creating uh, the volcano that we see here. So essentially, a plate moves this debris, this underground ocean rock, and then eventually gets moved with water and all kinds of other debris, gets heated up as it gets closer to uh, the core of Earth, which is very, very, very super hot. And then eventually what happens is that air is, or that, that, that material wants to be released, and it creates the rugged features as it starts to bubble, as it starts to build, as the volcano starts to build, creates the rugged feature, and eventually uh, blows off its top. 
So we can expect all throughout where we see convergent plate boundaries, we should expect to find potentials for volcanoes. And most certainly we do. So if we go to the other side of Southeast Asia from Sumatra, we see the Philippines where the Filipino plates colliding with the Eurasian plate. What do you know? We've had historical examples of volcanoes, one being the Mount Pinatubo eruption that happened before a lot of you were probably even born, June 1991. This was a massive, uh, you know, massive volcanic eruption. Um, so what we had is we had you know billions of 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 of, uh, of tons of stuff was magma and stuff was uh, essentially uh, uh, brought to the surface and then uh, obviously exposed in the form of ash and dust into the atmosphere. Further, uh, we've got a lot of sulfur dioxide, about 20 million tons that was produced from this this natural example of pollution, not human caused. Uh, we also had destruction of our ozone layer from this natural uh, example of pollution. Further, because of all this, you know, the aerosols and all the particulates in the air and the atmosphere just doesn't disappear. It essentially, you know, dissipates and filters off all throughout the atmosphere across the world. Essentially what that did was it caused global temperatures to go down about a degree Fahrenheit. So essentially what that is, the aerosols, all that stuff in the atmosphere was blocking incoming solar radiation from coming and hitting the surface. And so thus it actually created cooling. So now on our map that showcases uh, where we have convergent plate boundaries in Southeast Asia, the uh, star indicates the origins or where the Mount Pinatubo eruption occurred. However, you know, these are local situations uh, a local uh, natural hazard then becomes a more regional natural hazard because of the wind patterns in the particular time in June actually brought a lot of that ash and soot uh, onto mainland Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, but not also as far as Borneo uh, in the Malay Peninsula. So much that this image here is actually from across the South China Sea that ash was brought over to the Malay Peninsula where this image was taken. Another natural hazard besides volcanoes and earthquakes, it's an outcome of convergent plate boundaries, is a tsunami. And there was one that happened in 2004 that killed 250,000 people. That is a huge amount of deaths. If you think about that, that's about as many people go to the Indy 500 every year who died in this one natural hazard, this one natural disaster event that occurred just uh, the day after Christmas. So you had a lot of Europeans, even some Americans, Australians, who were vacationing during this time in Southeast Asia, uh, especially to get away from the winter that we would find in uh, the Northern Hemisphere. So that also added to a lot of the death tolls. You had a lot of people who were along coastlines hanging out on beaches when this huge tidal wave, this huge wave essentially came and surged onto uh, the shoreline. And just to understand the magnitude, this isn't just a big wave that kind of hit the shoreline. To show how far inland this huge wave that's triggered from an earthquake, and I'll explain that here in a minute, we can see a before and after picture of the island of Sumatra. So here's before and here's after. Huge devastation. So it didn't just affect those people that are just hanging out on the beach. It affected a lot of people farther inland as this, this huge wave comes uh, onto the shoreline. In three successive videos, I'm going to show how a tsunami forms and definitely focus in on the 2004, December 26 tsunami that devastated Southeast Asia. So what this was is this is an animation I've already shown in which, once again, we have those two plates colliding with each other. So I just want to focus in on this particular area right here. Keep in mind, we've got plate collision. We've got one plate going underneath another one. Keep also in mind, this is underwater. So now let's go to the next one. Now let's try to understand how a tsunami forms. And so once again, we think about that pressure. We think about two plates colliding with each other. This happens underwater. So essentially an underwater earthquake occurs, boom, sends a wave upward, and then sends that wave outward in all different directions. So a tsunami is essentially an underwater earthquake that sends a tidal wave upwards, or sends a wave upwards from that pressure being released and sends that wave then outwards. Now, this is kind of a misnomer because you can't see from above a tsunami. So this makes it quite devastating because it's not like we can get alerts like, hey, it's coming. You don't know it's really there until it's there. Now, there are more sophisticated techniques being used in which you're putting out sensors out in the ocean to be able to kind of detect when uh, you're going to get you know, a change 
and the obviously the flow of the water and the, obviously the height. Uh, but this has been one of the key concerns in a lot of these areas that are underdeveloped is they don't have what Japan has, is very sophisticated techniques to monitor uh, tsunamis before they arrive. Now let's go ahead and kind of have the have the, the final video, kind of the global view of the Sumatra uh, uh, earthquake that then sent a tsunami all throughout Southeast Asia but then South Asia, and that wave actually was felt as far as Africa, Somalia, Madagascar, in which they were impacted by uh, that, uh, uh, that tsunami that occurred December 26, 2004.